Okay, so then the second set of uh, structural elements that we're going to put in this project are the steel joists. And um, so what we're going to do is, let's see, here it is here. Let's go to our 3D view. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put in a series of steel joists. I'm going to hide the roof here so you can see them. All right, so these are the steel joists. These are the ones I've drawn on the, um, at the O2 level uh, that are supporting the roof. And so what you're seeing here is a series of steel joists, and they're at a regular spacing. And I think the spacing in this particular one is about three feet on center. And um, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, what we're going to do, though, is instead of using the beam command, what we're going to use is this guy right here, which is the beam systems command. And the beam systems command is basically just a fancy array command for uh, drawing in multiple beams. And um, so what you do is basically you're going to draw the boundaries of of where you want those beams to go. So you'll draw in like a big portion of the roof and then you'll tell it three feet on center and then it will space those beams in there at three feet in center within that closed loop. Okay, so so this is what it looks like on the uh, uh, on the roof level and so the ones we're going to draw though for the sake of this example are the ones that are going to be underneath our first floor. These are the ones that are going to appear in that crawl space. And so going to my section view again, they're going to go down here in that crawl space area. Okay, so let's go back to our instructions. All right, um, and I'm starting here at um, page 12. And what it's telling here at the bottom of page 12, what it's telling us is before we begin, we have to make an adjustment to those uh, foundation walls. So let me go back to my drawings here. So see these foundation walls? We've got we've got them going in two different directions. So this is going east west, and then we also have some others back here that are going north south. All right, we need our jo uh, our joists to run across here, so we need them actually to clear um, these uh, concrete uh, foundation walls. So what it's telling you is just make an adjustment on these. We're going to change the top of these um, concrete foundation walls. We're going to change them um, so that they're going to come in underneath the uh, joist, so the joist can kind of go right over the top of them. So what it's just all it's telling you to do is um, take the top of these joists here. I'm sorry, the top of these concrete um, foundation walls. And I'm going to change the top constraint from uh, 01 ground level to unconnected. And I'm going to change it to uh, 4 foot 1 and a half. So 4 foot 1 and a half inches. All right, so now these things are starting down here at the, uh, at the 00, 00 foundation level. And they're going up 4 foot 1 and a half. And then there's plenty of room here for our joists to um, kind of cruise through over the top of those. All right, uh, so our next step, so let's go back down to the, I think we're going to start these on the zero, 00 foundation level. Yeah, the two in the middle, but then also make sure you ch do the same thing to uh, these guys going north-south. So you'll have to do it to all those guys as well. All right, so then what are you going to do is change it to unconnected and change that to four, and a half, four foot one and a half. All right, so going back to our handout here. All right, so that's basically changing it to an unconnected height of four foot one and a half. All right, so then what we're going to do is we're going to do some open web, uh, open web steel bar joists, uh, and they're going to be placed at the zero zero foundation level in the, with the following parameters. So the top of these are going to be five foot, uh, five foot nine and one half inches from the zero zero foundation level. Now you can draw these from the ground floor level, the O1 ground floor level, and then you can just put a height of negative two foot one and a half on it uh, if you want. But for the sake of this example, I'm going to use the top of it, and I'm going to draw it from the zero zero foundation level. All right, so five foot nine and a half. Okay, and let's see. We're going to use a um, twenty LH O2 type of uh, of joist. All right, and let me kind of go through here. All right, and then we're going to use the beam tool, and we're going to draw these steel bar joists running the north south direction between grid lines uh, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up into sections. I'm going to draw them between grid lines one and two, two and three, three and four, five and six. So I'm going to do a series of um, of about uh, let's see about seven of these uh, sets of of joists. All right, and then our spacing. These joy steel joists should be spaced spaced at a typical spacing of three feet on center. All right, so that's our spacing. All right, so let's go back to our project. I'm at the O00 foundation plan, and our first step is basically to uh, start the um, beam system command. So I go to the structure tab, and then I go over here to beam system. All right, so once I'm in beam system, it gets me into um, 
Uh, actually, I'm going to sketch the beam system. So you can do it automatically, um, but it doesn't work so well. So I'm going to go into uh, sketch beam system. So I select sketch beam system, and then that takes me into uh, sketch mode. All right, so that's step one, is getting into the uh, beam systems command. Step two is uh, use the pick lines command and pick the supports for the beam. Um, this will either be the column line or uh, the center of the uh, foundation wall. So what I'm saying here is, is picking the foundation um, or picking the supports for these joists. So these joists are running north-south. So they're running from this wall to that wall. So the wall here is what's supporting those, um, those uh, joists. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pick lines command. All right, and I'm going to pick the center of that wall. So I pick center of the wall. All right, pick center of the wall there. So those are my two supports for that wall. All right, and then step three, then it says draw any remaining lines uh, of the boundary of the beam system to make a closed loop. So it has to be a closed loop. So what I'm going to do is these these beams, I'm going to do them in uh, a couple different sets. I'm going to do them from between one and two uh, for this particular set. So I'm going to pick column grid one and two. And I'm going to trim it so that it's a closed loop. So I go to the trim command. All right. And I trim it. Okay, so what I've got is a closed loop here. So this is our closed loop. And so what it's going to do is basically it's going to put in these steel joists um, within this boundary here at a spacing that we set, which is going to be three feet. All right, so um, then what it says in step four is select the beam direction. So a lot of you, when you're drawing your floors, you may have noticed these double lines here that go over the top. That is basically what's setting your beam direction or the direction of your structure. All right, so what we're actually going to do is run these um, in the north-south direction here. All right, so to change their beam direction, what you do is on the ribbon up here, you go to beam direction and select that, and then just pick the, uh, pick the edge that you want the beams going. So I'm going to run it the long way, so I pick that. And so now what's going to happen is our joists are going to run the long way here. All right, so that is our beam direction. All right, and then step five is we're going to set the spacing of our uh, steel joists. So we set in the instructions we want a, um, a spacing of three feet. Let me just check one thing real quick. All right, so you've got to read it real carefully here. What it said is um, these groups of steel joists should have a typical spacing of three feet on center and, um, okay, so three feet on center, okay. It doesn't say whether you want a maximum spacing or uh, a clear spacing. Let's just say we want a um, maximum spacing. Let's just keep it at that. So maximum spacing of three feet on center. All right, so I type in three feet. All right, so that's our beam spacing. Then, um, let's see, step six, select the beam type. Uh, in this case, uh, what it's asking for is a 20 LH02. Yeah, so if you don't have it, what you do is, if you do have it, it's here under beam type, and I'd go through here, and I'd pick it there. Uh, if you don't have it, then what you have to do is actually go back uh, to the beam command and load it in that way. The problem here is, actually, maybe I can load it in from here. Ah, I can load family from there. All right, so what I'll do is I'm going to go to insert. So I go to the insert tab. I'm going to say load family. All right, it takes me to my, my imperial library. Scroll down, I'm going to go to Structural Framing. All right, we're working with Steel. Okay, and then it should be LH Series Bar Joist. There they are. All right, so I click on there. So I'm going to open up. This is my LH Series Bar Joist family, and I'm going to say Open. And again, we get that type selector again. So th this is one of those things where if you get hundreds or you know more than, more than 20, say, uh, types in your particular family, um, you'll want to create a type selector, and um, and that's what this basically is. So I'm looking for the 20LH02, which is right there. So I select it, 20HL02, or 20LH02. I hit OK, and it's going to load it in there for you. All right, so it loads it in. Just think in, think in, think in. All right, so it's going to take some time to load in there. All right, so now I've got it loaded in. All right, so on my option, all right, yeah, on my properties dialog box, I'm going to select it from the drop-down menu, menu, 20 LH02. All right, and then uh, my next step, so that was six, so seven is go to the properties dialog box and set your beam elevation. And in this particular case, it's uh, five foot nine and a half. So our elevation is basically here on our properties dialog box. All right, so 
it's going to be five foot nine and a half inches above the um, zero zero foundation level. Okay. All right. And so I got that all set. So then once that's all done, you can hit the finish button. Now my finish button, I have to go back up to my ribbon and select that green tab again. All right. And then hit finish. Okay. Now again, it's underneath my, uh, it's it's above the top of this view, so I'm going to go back down to my section view. So when I go back to my section cut view here, and I, my detail level is set to fine so I can see it, and you can see here that it's uh, at five foot nine and a half inches, it's coming right underneath that finished floor. So here's my finished floor for my first floor. And here's my uh, steel joist, so five foot nine and a half inches puts it right underneath that, that uh, first floor. And then over here you can see it's kind of overlapping into those into that uh, foundation wall there so that's what you want that's actually how you want it to look and remember um, if you have it set to if your detail level is set to course it's just gonna look like this it's gonna look like a series of lines so it's better to just have it in uh, your detail level set to fine and then um, then that way you can see the detail of it and also you'll notice too here are our foundation walls and notice our beam or our joist is kind of running over the top of those so these foundation walls are clear of that. All right, so that's our beam system. So in this project, let me go back to my foundation view, and I'm just going to go to my foundation ceiling plan view, and that's not looking so good, so I'm not going to go there. Um, oh, okay, so some of you may be able to see yours. Let's see. But what I'm going to do is, so what we're going to do here is, um, in the directions, with that... Oh, okay. Yeah. But well, per the direction, so what I did is I created one uh, uh, between grid lines one and two, and then we're going to create new ones between two and three, three and four, four and five, and five and six. Um, and so do it that way. Then on the second floor and the third floor, just go ahead and, and just do one beam system all the way across. Only on that foundation level do I want you to do it in sections, because I just want to give you some practice in doing those beam systems. So I want you to do at least, you know, uh, five or six of them so that you kind of get practice in that. Um, all right. Yeah, yeah. In some situations, it would need to be that way, but 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 in this case, you know, this isn't. Yeah. Correct. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yep. And then the other thing, and the instructions here. Don't forget about this little pocket right here. Uh, we're not putting beam joy beam systems, or I'm sorry, we're not putting joists over that um, outdoor terrace area. Uh, we're going to run beams. Uh, we're going to run joists between two and and I think what is it eight? Uh, two and eight? I think is the other column grid. But down here in this little box here, between one and two, and between D and E, you're going to switch joists to a uh, 20k10. So you're going to have to load in another type of joist. It's a smaller joist, and it can span. It doesn't have. It doesn't span as far a distance. Um, so uh, just remember, in that little part right here, you're going to switch. Um, to a 20k10 and you're going to be um, running it just in that area right there. Alright, and so let me go back to our rivet model. There's our 3D view. Let me hide my walls so you can see. I just want to show you what that looks like on the first floor. Hide walls, hide floors. Alright, so those are the, there's the joists that I uh, that I just drew in. All right. Okay, so uh, any questions on that, on the beam system? All right, cool. I'll wrap this up.